Welcome back to my channel Among in Cloud. If you are new to this channel, Among in Cloud is a community where we discuss about cloud and DevOps. In the last couple of videos, we are trying to build serverless web application on AWS. So this is the project architecture, and we have completed this part by uh, you know integrating Route 53, creating DynamoDB table, and also we have created an IAM role for Lambda. In this video, we are going to see how to create a Lambda function and how to integrate it with the DynamoDB table, right? So without wasting much time, let's get into the project. So I am here in my AWS management console and here I need to click on Lambda or I need to search for Lambda. So as I've already used, I'll just click on Lambda. So here, if you see, this is asking me to create a Lambda function as I have not created a, a Lambda function before. I'll just click on create function and here it is asking me the function name. So what I'm going to give is the same thing. I'll just copy the same, uh, you know, serverless uh, project we have. Okay. So I'll just select that runtime. I'm going to select, um, you know, Python 3.8 because I'm comfortable with that. And in the advanced settings, you know, go and enable the function URL. So you can use function URLs to assign HTTP endpoints to your Lambda function. Before we had to, you know, use API gateway and all, but now they have simplified it by giving us an option to select or enable function URL. Okay. So auth type, you can just select none as of now. Basically, you are allowing Lambda won't perform IAM authentication on request to your function URL. Basically, the URL endpoint will be public unless you implement your own authorization logic in your function. Okay. So if you want, you can, you know, uh, configure chorus later, cross origin ratio sharing so that only uh, the website that starts with uh, monkincloud.tk can access this particular Lambda function, right? So you make sure you select these configurations and just click on create functions. So this is going to create a function for you. So let's wait for some time. So it is going to take some time to create a Lambda function. Later on, we can start coding the actual code for this Lambda function. Okay. So here, if you see the, we have the function URL, let me copy that function URL as of now. Let me close this one. This is the default code that you're going to get as soon as you create a Lambda function. Now, as I told you, this is the function URL, which is accessible publicly, right? So if I just paste that URL here in the tab and hit enter, you will, you are going to see the hello, hello from Lambda, right? So if you see here, that is what we have here in this Lambda function. Right. So now we need to remove this and we need to have our own code. So I'll just write uh, my code in a VS code and I'll dump it here. I don't recommend use, using this particular uh, you know editor here in the screen because this is very small. I'm going to use VS code and I write all my code there and I'll just paste it here. All right. So see you uh, after writing the code.
I just fast forwarded the coding part because I don't want to spend too much time, uh, you know, typing here. So this is what the program looks like, right? So if you see here, I've imported JSON. Uh, I'm just explaining the code that I've written. So I'm just importing the JSON first and Boto3 is needed, uh, the SDK for interacting with AWS. So basically, and uh, now I've uh, created a variable called DynamoDB and I'm interacting with DynamoDB. So I've uh, used that there. And under DynamoDB, we have a table called a serverless web application on AWS. So I'm just trying to use that here. And I have created a Lambda handler here. And basically this is getting the item. So if you remember, we had created a partition key called ID and it was set to zero. So that's what we have done here. Basically it is going to get that item. Later on, as and when uh, we have users, uh, the response, uh, you, you are getting that users and you are incrementing it. So as soon as you get the user, you uh, one, if a new user comes in, basically you are iterating right so if i let's say we have 10 views right now if i just refresh it 11 and if i just refresh it it should be 12 right so that is what we are trying to do here okay so let me come to the lambda function and later on we are printing those users okay and later on we are trying to uh you know put put item as in we are trying to update the users count so users count will be in, in, increased and the ID will be for one for now, right? So later on, I'll return the users at the end, right? So this is what uh, I've uh, done so far. Let me just uh, deploy this one, okay? So there is some error. Okay, let's figure out what is the error later. And I'll just click on uh, test. And here, if you see an error occurred, access denied exception. Okay, I understood what is the error. As I, as as you seen in the previous video, we have just created the IAM role, but we have not attached that IAM role to this Lambda function. So how do we do that? So you can go to configuration and here you have something called as permissions. You can just select permissions and you can click on edit here and you can come all the way down and you can uh, see the Lambda function serverless web application on Lambda or AWS. This is what our, uh, you know, um, IAM role that we created, right? So this is the IAM role and I'm just going to select that one, okay? So I'll select that one and I'll hit save. So now let us execute this Lambda function again. So basically now, we okay. So the issue was here, if you see here in the DynamoDB table, I have used an item called views. But here I'm trying to uh, use users, which is not going to work, right? So I need to change it to views here again. I'll just type in views and here too. I'll just copy and paste it everywhere. Wherever we see users, I'll just paste it views. Okay. So again here, I'll make that as users to views. Okay. So I hope uh, everywhere we have changed it. Okay, now let me just deploy again and let me test it once again. Okay, so you should be able to get the response. See, the response is two. Initially, we had the uh, DynamoDB table views as one. Now let me refresh here also. Uh, here if you see ID is changed to one and views is two now. Okay, now if I just, uh, you know, deep test it again, the ch it changes to two or what else? Uh, you can do is you can just this uh, copy this function url and open your terminal and you can just curl that url right so just type in curl and paste that url hit enter you should see the count changing okay so if you see here the count has changed to two right so this is the lambda function code that you have uh, in the you you can write and in the next video what i'll show is how to integrate this lambda function in your uh, website so that the view count will change automatically when you refresh the page okay so until then take care so if you're liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it among your friends thank you and i will see you in the next one